welcome to Haunted Talks, the official podcast of The Haunted Walk, offering ghost tours and paranormal adventures in Kingston, Ottawa, and Toronto, Ontario, and online experiences to anyone in this mortal realm. My name is Jim Dean. I am the creative director, and we thank you for joining us for this special episode. Chances are, if you listen to this podcast, you have been, or really want to go, to Alcatraz. It is a place that uniquely captures the imagination, with stories of the Civil War, hardened criminals, daring escape attempts, and lingering legends. Today, we will be exploring the rock through the eyes of Haunted Talks contributor and former Haunted Walks tour guide, Dr. Brittany Buss, as she visits the infamous island for the first time. While wandering the cell blocks and hallways, she will share her thoughts and impressions about this one-of-a-kind site and why it is important to preserve and visit places of loss, tragedy, and suffering. Her perspective as both a historian and as someone who has given tours in a haunted jail is extremely unique and insightful, and I can't wait for you to hear it. But before we get to that, in our last episode, I promised we would be announcing three new experiences very soon. And the first clue I gave was royalty. I wonder if any of you guessed it. On Friday, September 23rd, we are proud to launch our latest ghost tour in Kingston, Ontario the ghosts of Queen's University. Over the years, we've been collecting stories from the campus and surrounding area, but the location was always a bit too long of a walk to be included on our original Haunted Walk of Kingston. After going through our archives and doing some brand new research, we found a collection of stories that will chill and entertain. There are eerie tales of student grave robbers, professors reaching out from the beyond, heists gone wrong, and streets shrouded in mystery. As a Haunted Talks listener, if you purchase your spooky season tickets for Ghosts of Queen's University before September 23rd, you can get 20% off your tickets using the promo code CampusGhosts. Campus Ghosts, all one word, at checkout at hauntedwalk.com which of course is your best source for information and to purchase tickets for all of our different ghost tours and paranormal adventures that we offer. We will likely be announcing other new spooky experiences in Toronto and Ottawa before the next episode of Haunted Talks comes out. So be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all at Haunted Walk, to be among the first to find out what we have in store for you this Halloween season. Two easy and helpful ways that you can let us know you are out there and enjoying the show is to leave us a five-star review wherever you listen and to recommend Haunted Talks to family, friends, random strangers on the internet, or anyone you know would enjoy a good spooky story. For nearly a decade, I led people through the former cell blocks of the historic Carleton County Jail in Ottawa. Over the years, I discovered new stories about the building, dug deeper into understanding the place, and encouraged every visitor to feel the unique atmosphere of a historic jail. If you've ever been to such a place, a jail that has been shuttered for years, but still has some of its historic elements in place, you'll probably know that feeling. If you haven't been, I can't fully describe it to you. Instead, I encourage you to go out and seek that feeling for yourself. It's truly a unique experience 
that every lover of the paranormal should seek out, but also an important feeling for all of us as we seek to understand our collective dark histories. It didn't take long after becoming a tour guide at a historic jail that I began visiting others around the world, chasing what I call the feeling. From the famous Kilmainham Jail in Dublin to my favorite historic site in the United States, Eastern State Penitentiary, I've made it my travel goal to always find some type of jail to tour at nearly every destination I visit. As a historian, I'm endlessly fascinated by the dark history and particularly how difficult subject matters are taught to the public. As a tour guide, I like to learn from my colleagues in the field and see their connections to their place, how they express this feeling. As someone interested in the paranormal, I'm always looking for that fleeting feeling that you can only find in places with so much dark energy. So it's no surprise to anyone who knows me that Alcatraz has always been near the top of my list of places to see. I've always wanted to visit San Francisco, so it was the perfect excuse, if I ever needed one, to plan a trip to one of the most infamous prisons in the world. I finally had an opportunity to visit in late July of 2022 and see if I could find that feeling in one of the busiest tourist destinations in California. I booked myself a night tour, billed as a special experience where you could see Alcatraz as the sun sets and darkness descends. Following is a recounting of my journey through that site, a bit of history and some personal reflections on what places like this mean and why they're so important for us to visit and fully understand. For those who have never been to the rock in the middle of the bay, I'll set the scene. There's a modern looking ferry docked on shore right off a of main street in central San Francisco. The boat is crammed with people of all kinds, noise, excitement, cameras. It's hard to imagine the trip that people would have taken a century or even a half century before as they traveled to the gray and dreary island. The excitement of people on board the modern ferry significantly contrasts with the sense of foreboding doom most people must have had in the past. The one carryover from the past, however, is the weather. The weather in the bay is notoriously unpredictable and always changing. For my ride, it was suitably freezing in July, with very rough waters and distant fog. The splash of the bay on the side of the ferry drowned out most of the other noises, aside from the shrieks of people who were periodically splashed by the icy water, or the moans of those that were feeling a bit sick from the rough waves. I took the ferry just before 6 p.m., but it was already feeling dark as the sun had been covered all day by a cloudy fog. All of these atmospheric conditions were really setting the stage. On the ferry, I thought about the many escapes from the island. Those attempted, those successful, and those shrouded in so much mystery. The most famous, filled with the most intrigue, and by far the most attention over the years, was in June 1962, and involved three men, Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin. Their escape attempt has been covered by countless books, movies, podcasts, documentaries, articles, attempted replications, on and on and on. It's been covered so much, I won't outline the details here. But in short, the fate of those three men is completely unknown, and no consensus has ever been reached on how they met their end. 
and when. Well, my mind did drift to their attempt, imagining the difficulty of navigating this treacherous bay in the middle of the night, in a homemade raft, trying to do it in secret. I was actually thinking, though, about the others. While it was a federal institution, there were many other attempts, most of whom were caught before they got very far, rarely even into the waters of the bay. The only successful escapes were during the years the island was used as a military prison, before the security was beefed up and every single move of the prisoners was closely monitored. I thought about them as well, and this seemingly lost period of Alcatraz's history. But more on that later. As you approach the island, you begin to see all the different parts of this historic compound. There are intact buildings, like the cell block, which dominates the apex of the rock. There is the iconic water tower, the tallest part of the island that usually frames those pretty postcard-like pictures you see. I picked up a few such postcards myself. But then there are the other buildings, all in various states of repair or ruin, that don't get as much attention. Collectively, they tell a very eclectic and vivid history of this place and its people. You can also appreciate the striking topography as you get closer. The rocky outcrop in the middle of the bay looks unforgiving. The jagged cliffs, the steep slopes, the lack of vegetation, and the constant hum of birds. In a single trip to the island that lasted just over three hours, I barely scratched the surface of this multi-layered and melancholic place, but I was deeply struck by its importance, not only as a famous tourist destination, but a marker of human history. After about 20 minutes on the water, the ferry pulls into the dock at Alcatraz. As you shuffle around with the crowds trying to get off the ferry, it's difficult to imagine what it was like to arrive here for the different historical actors. You had military people who were arriving for their post, families who sometimes accompanied them, workers who would have came for their daily shifts, prisoners who were sent here to be kept locked away from society forever activists intent on occupying the island. Although the arrival point was the same, the experience today was very different. If you've ever been to Alcatraz, you'll probably recall the moment when you see the hill in front of you, knowing that you need to climb the steep slope to get to the major attraction, the cell block. Even surrounded by crowds of other visitors, there was a noticeable shift the higher and higher I climbed. The mood grew quieter, the unbridled excitement calmed, and there was an unexplainable darkness that began to cloak the atmosphere. It was just a whisper, but it was there, that feeling that I've experienced at the countless other jails I've visited. It was faint at the moment. But it was there. At that point, I knew that I had arrived. I obeyed the visitor guidance and picked up the standard audio tour, which I'm sure is very lovely. But I already knew I was looking for something and hoping to experience a feeling that wasn't going to be recounted in any recording, no matter how well constructed it was. At this point, you might already be wondering about the ghosts. Alcatraz is a well-documented haunted spot, sometimes called one of the most haunted places in America, or even the world, and you can certainly understand why. 
Numerous people suffered at this place, many of whom spent their final moments here forgotten by society. Despite its sublime beauty, it's weighed down in a dark history. And if you're paying attention, you'll still feel it today. The island has a long reputation of being haunted, and many people living and working there have had strange encounters for well over a hundred years. Many stories come from the 1940s, under the purview of noted skeptic Warden Johnson. His perspective gradually shifted after he spent more time on the island. One day, he distinctively heard the sounds of a woman sobbing as he was leading a tour of the area, but never found the source of the sounds. Another time, during a party he hosted, many other guards reported seeing a ghostly apparition that turned the room icy cold before disappearing. Others aside from Johnson have seen strange colored lights at the lighthouse. Prisoners and guards alike occasionally heard cannon fire, gunshots, keys clanging, wailing, and a host of other noises. The stories are endless, and it seemed that most people who spent any time on the island had something to tell. But one of the most notoriously haunted spots is cell 14D. Later, during my walk through cell block D, I was inexplicably drawn to the solitary confinement cells, or what is often called at many prisons, the hole. At Alcatraz, it was a set of cells set behind a curtain wall, separating them from the rest of cell block D and blocking out any bit of light that might have filtered through the windows. I recognized the type of cell right away and knew what these were before the audio tour explained them. Normally, I don't like stepping inside of cells. I avoid these spaces partially out of respect for any restless spirits, but also because the feelings are sometimes overwhelming. But these ones were drawing me in, and I couldn't miss the opportunity to go inside a cell at one of the most infamous prisons in the world. I approached them and hesitated going inside one of them, though. Although it was empty, free from other visitors, it didn't feel right. Instead of going in that particular cell, I waited for another one to clear out so I could spend a quiet moment alone inside. Later, I learned about the infamous cell 14D and realized that was the cell I decided not to enter earlier. It was the documented site of a suicide, and a story that has gained urban legend proportions. The cell is reportedly still haunted by the tortured soul of the man who met his end there decades before. But back to my tour of the cell block. At the first stop on the audio tour, I was already straying off script. I pushed pause and was drawn to somewhere else that the rest of the crowd had missed. It was a little hallway that clearly led to a parallel block. Even though the crowd was shuffling with their audio tours a few steps away, there was a foreboding feeling in that little alcove, which I later found out was also the site of a murder, and I could see another space just beyond. It was a cell block off to the side, unlit and unpresented, with a chain across the barred doors. The dim light from outside illuminated the darkened space, and I could see some empty cells were used for storage nowadays. But there was something else here. The cells looked different, and to my trained eye, I could see that they were older and unused or at least less cared for. This wasn't going to be a stop on the audio tour, and probably for that reason, I was fascinated by it. 
It was closer to ruin and being unkempt than anywhere else in the main cell block. I would later come to learn more about this place and why I must have felt so drawn to it. My first walk through the cell block was busy. I got my bearings, checked as many corners as I could, and then went outside. I knew I could enjoy the cell block again when the initial rush had quieted down. You'll remember, outside was icy cold, with a relentless wind that pushed people back inside or prompted them to head to the ferry a little early. I was tempted to go back for cover after the wind became so strong it nearly blew me over. But then I heard it. A distant, deep bellowing of a foghorn. It transported me in time instantly. Each foghorn has a slightly different sound, but the one coming from the Golden Gate at San Francisco Bay has some unique tone. If you've heard it, you know. Standing on the rock in the middle of the bay with the relentless wind, only punctuated by the mournful sound of a distant foghorn, is an experience that can never be replicated. I'm not sure how long I stood there, soaking in that atmosphere, but this was Alcatraz. This was that fleeting feeling. Well, I didn't see anything paranormal in that moment. I could feel it. The island was forever haunted by its dark history, and it all came flooding in with that sound. That mournful foghorn with its haunting bellow followed me back inside to the cell block. By now, the crowds had significantly dwindled. Most had run off to catch an earlier ferry, while others had simply moved on to other walking tours, the gift shop. The sun was setting and I noticed the cell blocks getting darker, the warm lights casting eerie shadows, the old systems making subtle noises, the entire building and its spirits letting out a long sigh after another busy day. I returned to the solitary confinement cells around cell block D to await the start of a short tour. I arrived first, and was alone there for a quiet few minutes. As a former tour guide, I always like to meet at least one person practicing the craft at the historic sites I visit. I decided to join a group for a short program about stories of disobedience. I was hoping to learn more about some of the conditions of the prison and what people incarcerated here would have faced. As I was waiting for the tour, I could hear that mournful foghorn again. The cell block at this point had mostly gone silent, and it was easy to transport myself back to a time when this wasn't a tourist attraction, but rather a place of endless suffering. The wind was rattling the windows slightly, and the building gave off a faint but noticeable moan It was sturdy and had survived constant terrible weather, but the building was tired, perhaps weighed down in its history. There it was again, the feeling. Standing in that quiet cell block, the wind whipping the darkened bay outside, the foghorn warning of a foggy danger. Perhaps some will be disappointed to hear that I didn't see anything. No shadow figures or chains moving on their own. And other than the foghorn and the wind, I didn't hear anything paranormal either. But the feeling was overwhelming. This was truly a place haunted by its past. I let myself soak 
up this feeling before other visitors began to arrive for the program. I eventually started talking with the tour guide and was ready for that scripted spiel. But circumstances suddenly changed. The group who showed up for the tour was very small, and the tour guide offered a special look into a part of the site that is usually closed off. To my surprise and delight, we went to that cell block that had fascinated me at the beginning. This was part of the military jail, an earlier experiment in constructing cell blocks that was notoriously escapable and therefore infrequently used. Most importantly, it contained a staircase that led downstairs to a much older part of the island. Few people who visit Alcatraz realize its very long history as a place of incarceration before it was run as a federal prison, which began in 1934. The island in the middle of the bay was a strategic post since early European inhabitation. Even before the US Civil War broke out, the island's isolated position was viewed as a strategic advantage for keeping people out, but also for keeping people in. The island was an active military post in the 19th century, and as early as 1860, military personnel who were imprisoned for different offenses were housed there. Alcatraz was a federal institution for just over 30 years, but it was a military prison for over 70. The old citadel was torn down to its first level in the early 1900s to make way for the new cell block. But parts of the original building, that citadel, were capped, including the distinctive spiral staircases that were installed upstairs. Additionally, the foundations of the citadel were used for the modern concrete building above. It meant that the basement of the citadel, including its dark, solitary punishment cells, were preserved and still used. Walking down the steep steps into this basement dungeon was a transformative experience. I've been in historic jail basements before. They are dark, windowless holes that are not fit for any human inhabitation. And yet, people lived and died down there. These basements were usually reserved for the worst kinds of torture, doled out to anyone the prison deemed the worst kinds of people at that time. But they often did very ordinary things to find themselves down there. They spoke to a fellow inmate. They completed their work too slowly or too quickly. They showed compassion to a comrade. They stole food because they were starving. Other people were sent down here for truly tragic reasons, though. Indigenous elders were shuttered away because their communities refused to send their children away to schools. Pacifist and peaceful cultural leaders were sent here because they refused to take up arms and be drafted for military service. The stories are endlessly horrific and inhumane as their treatment during their time in the hole must have been. If the rest of Alcatraz felt haunted, this part of the island felt even darker. There was a quiet solitude down here that amplified the feeling so much. It was almost overwhelming. These people, their stories, had been silenced and forgotten. There wasn't much to the space. Arched alcoves that acted as dark cells, where prisoners were kept completely in darkness, usually chained up without clothing and no adequate nourishment. 
There were hallways with low ceilings that added to the claustrophobic feeling that you couldn't escape. The feeling down here was so different, though. Although not visited by the large majority of tourists, this was such an important story. This was a place to put down the audio tour, to put aside your tourist gaze, and just understand this place, its people, and its history. I felt immensely privileged that I was granted the time to be in this space and to hear these stories. Ascending the stairs from the dungeon back into the cell block was a very quiet moment for me. Even in the short time that I was downstairs, I had almost forgot the sound of the wind on the windows or the foghorn in the distance. There was an indescribable quiet in the dungeon, partially out of respect, but also because it was meant to be that way. This was the place where people were sent to be silenced. It was an endless hole where humans and their stories were buried. And even today, it seemed like a forgotten part of the island by many visitors. While there are valiant efforts to restore the area, and I do understand the problems of logistics and damage that too many visitors can do, This was such an important story that needed to be told and a space that needed to be experienced. I hope that the more people who felt that feeling, especially the silence in that hole, would understand our dark histories and the need to know them in the present. My trip to Alcatraz was coming to an end As I left the giant concrete structure that is the cell block, I couldn't help but reflect on this place. The sun was gone by now, the dark island illuminated only by a few strategically placed lights. The foghorn had stopped, the waters looked much calmer, and the wind, relentless, had even died down. It was a rare moment of quiet and stillness in this dark place. And that's when I felt the other feeling I normally feel at historic prisons. A quiet horror. These are dark places of torture and death, and I appreciate the moment to reflect on them. I'm so glad they are open to the masses, and I always encourage people to understand them. But I'm also struck by the crowds who visit these places, and I wonder, could you feel it too? The very dark and deep energies of these places that represent some of the worst moments in people's lives? I could feel those spirits and their stories weighing on me as I went down the hill. Emotion swelled inside of me some combination of sorrow, and anger. But in that moment, as I let myself feel the place one more time, it was also a reminder of how important this place is. Alcatraz seems to hold this allure, perhaps because it's such a foreboding place, the prison of our worst nightmares. But being there... In that moment, surrounded by the darkness in those horrific histories, I was reminded that places like these are important for our collective memories. We need to remember them, who was there and what was done to them. We need to feel them. As the ferry pulled away, the island looked a bit lonely out there in the middle of the bay. Without any visitors at all, it must be incredibly eerie. Those atmospheric sounds I heard would be all the louder, the darkness even deeper. But tomorrow, when the sun was already in the sky, the 
island would welcome more visitors and then do it again the next day and the next. I watched in the distance as the island became a small dot and the bright lights of central San Francisco came into view. The fleeting feeling was gone, but the memory of that place, its stories, its dark histories, and its spirits will remain with me and, I hope, with every visitor who's touched by that place. Thank you for joining us on our trip to San Francisco. If you're interested in learning more about Alcatraz, I would encourage you to dig into the archives and check out episode 19, The Fate of Kingston Penn. In that show, we speak to the Director of Media Relations for the San Francisco Travel Association and also a park ranger from Alcatraz. A big thank you to Dr. Brittany Buss for allowing us to travel with her and hear her thoughts on Alcatraz and some of the issues involved with the preservation of dark historic sites. It only increased my desire to visit that famous island in the San Francisco Bay. For information about our new Ghosts of Queens University tour, or any of our ghost tours or paranormal adventures in Kingston, Ottawa, or Toronto, please visit our website, hauntedwalk.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all at Haunted Walk. And if you have a moment to leave us a five-star review wherever you listen, it would be greatly appreciated. As always, my sincere thanks to the entire Haunted Talks team, including Michelle Dennis, our outstanding audio editor. Until we meet again, sweet dreams. <laughs>